Hello everyone, in this video I want to discuss multivariable calculus and calculus with parametric curves. So uh, let's say we're giving parametric equation x equals a cosine t, y equals b sine t, and I want to answer two questions. The first one, uh, I want to find the area enclosed by this curve, and second question, I want to find the arc length of this curve. Okay, so let's first tr start to try to visualize uh, this curve for a given interval of t from 0 to 2 pi. The first thing that we can do, we can eliminate the parameter. And how are we going to do this? We're going to take uh, two equations, and first equation divide both sides by a, and second equation divide both sides by b. So we'll have x over a equals cosine t, and my second one y over b equals sine t. Then I'm going to square them up, add them up, so we'll have x over a squared plus y over b squared equals cosine squared t plus sine squared t, which in this case equals to 1. So I have that the whole equation equals to 1. Okay, so let's graph it. We can see uh, really easily that this is going to be equation of an ellipse. But I want to know if it's stretched more in x direction or in y direction. So let's answer this question. So first I can see that a is bigger than b. So if I know how the ellipse looks like, ellipse looks something like this. But so if I want to find the ellipse, I need to find the intersection with x-axis and with y-axis. I can find this really easily from this equation by just making y equals to zero. I will find x-axis intersection because in this case all values of y are going to be equal to zero. And when x equals to zero, I will have y-axis intersection. Okay, so let's first find x-axis. So y equals to 0, then x squared equals, I will going to multiply both sides because this term is 0, and I will multi multiply both sides by a squared, I will have a squared. So from here I will have that x equals plus minus a. And for the same, in the same way I can find that y equals plus minus b. And since a is bigger than b, it means let's say this is going to be my plus minus a, and this is my plus minus b. So I have this ellipse. So my goal is to find for the first question the area of this ellipse. So let's recover the formulas that we know for the area from single variable calculus. Uh, from single variable calculus, if y equals f of x, then uh, you remember that uh, if you want to find the area under the curve, we just need to find uh, the integral of f of x dx from a to b. So it means if I have some function f of x and I have my, this is my a, this is my b, this is going to be my area. Okay, but what about this case? In this case, when we have Cartesian, we can move to parametric equation by making x equals x of t and y equals y of t. So we're going to make them dependent on t. So my area formula, integral from a to b, f of x dx, are going to be rewritten in terms, we want to rewrite this formula in terms of t. But what is my f of x? My f of x is just y equals f of x. So my f of x is going to be just, in this case, y of t. But I need to find dx. But dx I can find from the formula that d of x of t is just derivative of x prime of t times dt by using chain rule. Or in other words, what you can say, if you're going to divide both sides by dt, we have the dx of t over dt equals x prime of t. So this formula is true because we can derive this formula basically from definition of my derivative when I look for derivative of my function corresponding to t.
Then I can rewrite my dx as x prime of t dt. Right now we have integral in terms of t. So we want to change our bounds to be in terms of t. So we're saying that we go from our initial point to our terminal point. And in other words, from t naught to t1. So the formula for area for parametric uh, equation are going to be the following. Integral from t0 to t1 of y of t times x of t dt. Okay, so let's apply this formula and let's find the area of our ellipse. So we have integral from t0 to t1 of y of t x prime of t dt. So here we can see that t0 and t1 is just going to be 0 and 2 pi. So we have integral from 0 to 2 pi. Our y of t is just b sine t. So we have b sine t. And x prime of t is derivative of x corresponding to t. So it's going to be just minus a sine t. And we have dt. Here, a and b are constants, so I'm going to factor them. So we'll have minus a b, and inside I have the integral from zero to two pi of uh, sine square t dt, and I want to evaluate this integral. And I need to remember the formula for sine square t. I can rewrite this formula by using trigonometric identity that sine square t equals 1 minus cosine 2t over 2. So my integral is going to be equal to integral from uh, a minus b from 0 to 2 pi. And then I'm going to have inside 1 minus cosine 2t over 2 dt. And here I'm going to use one trick small one that you can use on your test. Integral of cosine in this case is going to be sine to t. So when I'm going to plug in t equals to 0 and t equals to pi, I will have sine of 0 and sine of 4 pi. And both of them are 0. So basically when I'm going to find the integral of my function, this term is going to be equals to 0. So the only term which is going to give us non-zero is going to be 1 half. In that case, my integral minus AB is going to be just 1 half t when t changes from 0 to 2 pi. And after you will plug it in with your formulas, you can see that our integral is going to be actually equals to minus PAB. And you wonder like, why do we have a uh, negative sign? And negative sign basically depends what parameterization did we choose. If I will choose another parameterization, I will get positive sign. But in this case, uh, we can just put uh, absolute value. So my error is going to be just P, A, B. So this is the area of an ellipse. In my next video, I'm going to do the second part of this problem. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe.